Hello, everybody, and welcome. Thanks for coming out tonight. Uh, I'm kind of uh, pinching myself that this actually happened. Uh, Miller texted me uh, the, yesterday. We put this all together in 24 hours. Some of you have come from Greenfield and Bloomington. Thank you for doing that. This is so cool. Thank you for those of us who are joining us online. Um, so uh, let's get to it. Uh, um, so I, I wrote this out. Miller Cop needs no introduction, but if you just live under a rock, here we go. Hailing from Houston, Texas. I should do it in the announcer way, shouldn't I? Hailing from Houston, Texas. <laughs> so, Indiana University forward, Miller Cop is the all time leader. Come on in, dude. Yeah, I'll brag on you once you're there. Welcome, Miller Cop. <laughs> have, have a seat. I'm early. So no no you're you're perfect you're perfect so I I started to do this and I should do it in the announcer voice you know hailing from Houston Texas so but dude you're the all time leader in Big Ten basketball games played so get these statistics this season so Miller shot uh, forty eight percent from the field his three point average uh, was forty four point four percent and from the line he shot eighty two point six percent. He's known for his tenacious defense, his hilarious post-game interviews. Seriously, go online, watch them. And in the NCAA tournament for his high fashion style. He's also a person of strong faith. Tonight he's here to talk about his basketball career and his faith. Let's give him another round of applause. Please welcome Miller Cop. So thank funny. you, thank you. It's great to be here, by the way. Thank you so much, and on, sh on short notice, so it, it uh, is really, really cool to be here. Well, I, I told the folks this morning, you know, it's like writing a letter to Santa Claus, and then Santa Claus write you back. I'm like, I'd written Miller a couple of letters. I'm like, oh, I'm getting a text from Miller. This is a prank. You're going to sell me aluminum, you know, siding or something like that. So, um, hey, uh, people have gotten your things you shared on Twitter, 100 things you've learned. Uh, so, um, tell us about how you got from Houston, you, you're, you know, you're a Texas man. You got from Houston to Northwestern and then you got to Indiana. Well, uh, obviously the one constant was basketball. Um, uh, I, out of high school, I had a goal of playing division one basketball and, uh, pretty much worked just tirelessly to be able to achieve that. And, um, out of high school, I had a lot of, you know, opportunities to go different places in college and I chose Northwestern for a multitude of different reasons but um, I decided after three years it was just time for me to make a change and, and uh, it just I was moved and I, I felt like I needed to go somewhere else and funny enough I decided like when I decided to transfer I was like I'm getting as far away from the Big Ten as possible I need to get away um, I, I've been playing the same teams for three years I don't want any any piece any part of it, and then Indiana calls. I'm like, well, I kind of like Indiana. I kind of like Indiana. Like, it's it's always been pretty cool. And so, uh, you know, one thing led to another. I got on the phone with Coach Woody, and you know, the rest is history. I know that Clint Eastwood, when he was doing his movie in 1992, Unforgiven, he wanted Richard Harris to be in it. So he gets Richard Harris's number, calls him up. He's in the Bahamas. His his Butler says, Clint Eastwood's on the phone. He, he takes a call. He says, hey, buzz off. You know, it's, it took two or three calls. Did, did you kind of like, wait, Mike Woodson is calling me? Did that kind of, was it kind of a weird moment? Well, one of the assistant coaches called me first. And I was like, ah, you know, I'm not really sure. Like, you know, they didn't tell me who they had hired yet. And so, again, I was like, you know, I'm just trying to stay out of the Big Ten. And I'll, 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 I'll talk to you next week. Pretty much like, maybe. If I want, if I call you back, and then they hired, you know, Coach Woody, and they sent me his like resume and stuff, and I was like, oh, okay, well, let's set up a Zoom, <laughs> and then, uh, you know, we got on the phone, and and uh, it was it was kind of pretty simple after that. Oh my gosh, wow, it's all right. I'm a total addict, so I'm I'm in my crack house right now, guys and gals. So <coughs> this Doesn't is look like one in here. <laughs> This is total catnip. I want us to lock the doors and keep you here until every single question is answered. Th this, this is so cool. I can't believe it. So um, 
you said in your, your 100 things, hey, this game takes a toll on your body. How do you bounce back, not just physically, but also mentally? We know that Big Ten, the most physical league. I mean, how do you do that? I mean, I'm uh, obviously older than you, but as Harrison Ford said in Raiders of the Lost Ark, it's not the years, it's the mileage. Well, I got the mileage. Maybe not the years, but I got the mileage. Um, but, no, it, it's – I think it's two things. You have to have the – like the want to do it every single day. Uh, you know, there are guys who – they're kind of on the brink of like, oh, I, could, I, I could practice today, but I also – I could take today off. And for me, it's like I don't ever – you know, want to miss a day, miss a practice, miss a game. And, you know, you saw from my, like, track record, I really didn't just because I really, really wanted to. And so it's a lot of it's just like your grit and your will to want to do it. And, you know, the other piece is like how you take care of yourself off the court. And so that's me. I don't really, I don't, I don't go out. I don't, um, you know, I, I, I don't really stay up late. Like I go to bed early. I'm a boring guy outside of basketball. And, uh, you know, some, some TikToks here and there. And then um, that's really it, though. It's, 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 it's very simple. So th th he's, he's telling the truth. So when I get up yesterday, I get this text. It was like at midnight from Miller Cop. And I'm like, oh, my gosh, this is a prank. But then I texted you back this morning. Now, it's Sunday morning. We all know what happens Saturday nights on college campuses. You text me back at, like, 830. I'm like, dude, there's something wrong with this guy. You know, he's locked in. But no, clearly you you were so dedicated to uh, to your your sport and, and to your career. How do you do this? I mean, you got to get shots up every day. You want to hit the gym. You got to hit the books. Do you ever sleep? I sleep like a baby. <laughs> I uh, bet. <laughs> me and my dog Ivy, we cuddle up, and it's it's simple. It's very simple. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, and uh, uh, you've talked about your, your dog. What kind of dog is it? A boxer dog. One year oh, old. Just oh, one year cool. old. Oh, how cool. Oh, my gosh. So, and, and Grace Thompson is your roommate. Yep. Yeah. So, how, how's he like, I mean, my roommate, I went to Wabash College. My roommate wanted to get a tarantula. Okay. No way. I I said I'd coat it with uh, you know uh, raid and just until you couldn't see it anymore. So that vetoed that. But I'd move yeah, out. How, how's race with with the uh, with he, Ivy? He has a dog too, so they play and they they get along well. And Ivy has a little more energy um, than race's dog, so sometimes you got to separate them because Ivy just doesn't stop. But uh, they they're they're friends for sure. I think I've seen because you know like uh, you know I uh, you know I'm an addict so I've got a season ticket down at IU and and during the the TV commercials so they'll they'll run kind of you know things to keep you entertained so it was like uh, they had the uh, the players pets and I think they had a picture of races dog doesn't he have like a golden doodle a golden doodle yeah and yeah. yeah it's a little older but yeah it's a great dog and they're great like dog. very laid back very laid back very relaxed and boxers have like unlimited energy and so yeah i uh i it's either walks i walk all day with her or <laughs> it's uh toys or whatever it is i'm yeah. uh, that's another you know again i don't really do much outside of basketball except that and my dog really wow oh my gosh so well uh you know, you've talked about the importance of nutrition, right? So Logan Duncan, uh, a, a, a substitute for our center, 6'10", a stick last year. He comes back this year. He's, like, thick. And I was, I was like, how did this happen? So one of the assistant coaches I read somewhere, he, he said, Logan, what's your favorite uh, flavor of Ben and Jerry's? And then every day to practice, he brought that to him. So – that's the kind of guy I could get behind. So, uh, so I'm not on that diet. There's no <laughs> no chance. So, but when you cheat, when you cheat, what 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 do you go for? All right, I'm going. I'm going. It's it's a it's a full day, really. I'm going Chick Fil A. I'm going. Wow. But here's the thing. It's it's a kind of like a best kept secret. They've got really good ice cream. So I get a little ice cream cone. It's funny because I'll get a meal. And then I like get up to the front, and they're, they're like ice cream cone, and then they look up, and I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, it's always a little awkward, just cause like they don't expect me to get ice, like a little small dainty ice cream cone, but I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, 
No, but uh, I'll hit some Chick Fil A, then maybe some some pizza, and then finish it off with some ice cream. So. Okay. All right. Yeah. Good stuff. Now, if you're wondering how, uh, and I'm still wondering this, you know, a a how Miller is here. So, <clears throat> I don't know if you've noticed, but on the games, of course, they they introduce the players, and so, but I've noticed that every time Miller's announced now. This guy is 23 years old. He's got 35,000 Twitter followers. I mean, I couldn't handle that kind of adulation and attention. I, I mean, my ego, would it wouldn't fit in the sanctuary, folks. But when Miller's introduced, they'll, they go, Miller, God, you know, the great voice. But as Miller would kind of go through, you know, his teammates, the line, he always would point up, and I thought, this young man is saying silently but very clearly, I'm being applauded, O oh Lord, but I acknowledge you. I mean, clearly your faith is important to you. T tell us a little something about that. Um, you know, so really for me, you know, having two years at Indiana, my first year I kind of struggled. I, uh, it, was, it was tough because, like, on the court I wasn't as – I didn't have the success I wanted to. Um, you know, whether it was statistics or, or, or games won or how much I played. And uh, I put everything into that, all my joy, my happiness, everything I had. And, and um, it was exhausting. It, it was crushing. It was one of those things where, you know, I lived and died by every, not just game, but practice. Um, you know, if I had a bad practice, I couldn't, I, I would barely sleep at night because I was just waiting to go for the next day. Um, to prove myself again to myself and um, you know for me I you know was always call myself a Christian and um, you know but never really knew what that meant or what that felt like and so um, last year after the season ended I went down to Naples Florida where um, I go hope you know usually every summer every off season and uh, I met this man on the beach and just started talking he had a cute dog and I had a dog too and we started talking and you know little do I know for the next six hours I'm in his house um, at like 10 30 p.m. and my parents are calling me and like, where are you what are you doing and I'm in this like 80 year old man's house talking about my faith and um, you know one thing led to another um, I went back down you know before we came back for preseason and you know gave my life to christ and um you know truly i knew and i felt what that what it meant to be a christian and be a believer and um you know that was right before it was literally the day um before the day of my flight to go back to houston to then go back to indiana and um it was something that i never could have imagined and or planned um and it gave me the feeling of relief, the feeling of just a weight lifted off my shoulders, knowing that no matter what happens on the court, outside of the court, I'm okay, and I'm saved, and I'm, I'm good. And so that was, um, I think, the biggest part of my success that I had this year, personally, and you know, emotionally, mentally, was knowing that no matter what happens, I'm not this basketball player only you know I, I didn't like I said I didn't live and die by anything on the court um, and I prayed before every game with you know our strength coach coach Cliff and um, was able to every game just understand that I'm playing for an audience of one not just the 17,000 um, in the in the assembly hall and uh, it, it that was the biggest um, thing for me coming into this year and uh, gives me perspective on, you know, everything, you know, moving forward. Yeah, you know, I know it, it's really cool. I know you live by stats and, and scores and all that, but it's really cool that God doesn't keep score, except I think when we get to heaven, God's going to kind of show us all the kind of cool things that we were able to do. And like I was just thinking of that 80-year-old guy, he's it definitely got an assist, right? I mean, he he connected he you. He, he, he hooked you up. and. And that's a beautiful thing because it seems in my life and maybe to, to you all too, I mean, the Holy Spirit will bring people into your life that you need to meet at the right time. Or, or maybe it's something you've ignored it, you've ignored it, you've ignored it, but finally 
s somebody gets through. And I just think that's really cool. And I, I really think, and we know it's going to be a long, long time from now, uh, but when you get to heaven, because of, again, that's very silent thing, but a very clear thing that people have noticed. People are, and people are noticing now, peop you're going to have so, uh, a high assist count, I think, uh, Miller. You can count I on that. I hope so, yeah. <laughs> oh, my gosh. So um, i got to ask you, you are IU's go-to three-point shooter, okay? But Woody rarely ran a play to, like, design for you. I mean, I get it, you know, Trace, you know, feed the post, you know, that's good. But that's a tough situation to be in. I mean, how did you deal with that pressure? Uh, it's one of those things where you get the ball and you don't start out the game touching the ball and then you get it and then you have to shoot it and then you got to make it. And so it's simple terms of, you know, I asked Coach Woody after the season last year um, and I was like, okay, what do you what do you need me to do? Like, what's my role? And he, he just said, make shots. <laughs> That's it. That's it. I said, I literally said, Coach, like, what's my role? What do you need from me? Make shots. And I stood, I sat there like, okay. And? <laughs> they didn't say anything. And so I left. I was like, okay, pretty simple, I guess. And, um, you know, but as far as, like, the shots and stuff, it's tough because you Trace is so good. Like, he's so good. And I love when he has the ball because when he has the ball, I get it a lot of the times. It's either going up in the, into the rim and he's dunking it, or it's usually coming to me. So I try to get him the ball as much as possible because I know he wanted, he was trying to find me. So that that was kind of the symbiotic relationship we had. Yeah, yeah. So you guys, seriously, you got to go online and watch some of these post-game interviews. So Miller's being interviewed about his three-point shooting. And, and Trace, you know, there's two players each game, and it changes. So but it, it's Miller and Trace. And so Miller's talking about that. And, and, and TJD keeps interrupting. He's going, uh, I just keep saying to Miller, be ready, be ready, be ready, be ready. And, and you're like, yeah, That's you do. Be ready, be ready. Yeah. And, and, then, and then you're going on talking. It's like, yeah, every time you touch the ball, I want it up. Every time you touch yeah. it, I want it up. He, when he has the ball on the block, he'll pe take a peek over his shoulder. And if I'm there, he'll peek again, and they'll lock eyes. And be like, okay, well, it's coming. Whether it's going to be one dribble or two dribbles, it's coming. And so that's how I know. It's like, okay, well, he'll be here, peek. Oh, all right. You know, I'm just like, just ready <laughs> for it. <laughs> and uh, so, yeah, that I love when he has the ball because it's just like when we lock eyes, I know it's he's slinging it over to me. So I, d I don't know if you're a movie fan, but in Marvel movies, they're, they're, they generally, they'll do a kind of a slow motion and they'll freeze it, you know, when they're at their most heroic. And, and so the, a play with TJD and you was like that in that it was a fast break. It was in the tail end of the season or in the tournament. And Trace does this unbelievable, he leaps up and he's got the ball, like a baseball pitcher, and you're heading for the basket and he just like, you know, bullets the ball to you and then you slam it home. And I was like, oh my gosh, this is like a Marvel movie or something. So it was really cool. I was excited because I don't get many layups and I was just running. <laughs> I was running, usually I'm running the, to the three point line, but then I saw an opening, I'm like, oh my gosh, I get a layup. <laughs> so cool it, and to me the beauty of the game I mean when things are clicking it's it's like no kidding it's like poetry or like when you watch someone who's like really in their their they're kind of in that zen sort of zone it's really cool and I, I think that's why the state follows you at least half of us do so yeah, I guess. that's <laughs> enough that's enough <laughs> So we're talking about Trace a little bit. Uh, halfway through the season, you were going through a rough stretch, and uh, I know it, you know we hear uh, you know, through the press you know he called a players only meeting. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Uh, it was more. It was kind of like a, more of an informal thing, type of type of deal where, like, you you have this much time throughout the year with your team. You spend nine months with them, and then you're you know everybody. You know what makes them happy what makes them sad what ticks them off and what guys are thinking you know at this time of the year what guys aren't playing what guys want more shots what guys, like everything and so basically it was just about having just calming everybody down in in terms of just understanding that 
what was happening the two or three games we lost in a row is so was so small in the grand scheme of things. It's not like anything was happening within the team. It was more of like, hey, don't worry about what anybody's saying. We lost a couple games. You know, it is what it is. So it, that's really what it was. It was it was more of just uh, guys, we're good. You know. So uh, can uh, Bob Knight spoke here at Chadwick Court, nearby college, told a lot of stories. This was 10, 15 years ago. He talked about being on the USA uh, uh, coaching the USA team. Michael Jordan's on that. And so right before, the, like, the final game, you know, it's the Olympics, and uh, he's giving his spiel or, you know, laying into him or whatever, and then Michael Jordan kind of stands up and he says, hey, coach, don't worry. After all the crap you put us through, we're not going to blow it. So can, can you tell us a memorable locker room moment or speech or something funny that happened? I don't know. Do you guys Gatorade, you know, tank each other i got one i got one <laughs> he's gonna hate me for this though <laughs> so yeah this is coach coach walsh i'm sorry this is this is it's funny okay we've all been there so basically so every you know every game uh you know a coach has like a scout like a, the assistant coach is um basically assigned the team so you know, co one one assistant coach will have Michigan. You know, the next game we're playing Illinois. A different assistant coach will have that game, and so they can kind of plan and get ready and learn all the plays and go through the film and stuff. And so leading up to the game, you know, the two days before we start our uh, like prep. You know, in terms of scouting guys, what they like to do, their tendencies and stuff. And so you know, the assistant coach is like up here going on the talking over the film, and we're in the seats. And we, you know, we watch film in our locker room. And so, you know, in the front row is, like, you know, Trey Galloway, Race, uh, Trace, Fino, you know, and then Coach Woody's right in the middle, you know, looking, and then it's X and me. And Coach Walsh, I'm sorry. And, and okay. <laughs> he basically, we the, everybody in the front row, he's talking, by the way. Coach Walsh is like, all right, you know, so this guy, he loves to drive left. And then he goes, sorry, guys. And then, you know, he keeps going. And then we're just like, what does he mean, sorry, guys? Like, right in the middle. And then you go. <laughs> <laughs> and I kid you not, it was it was like uh, a cloud of. <laughs> and, Woody, and, and Coach Woody, and me, you look over, and he's like this. <laughs> and he's. All, he, all he's doing is this. <laughs> and so uh, it, 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 was, it was the funniest thing because he's talking. He goes, sorry, guys. And, um, <laughs> you know, one thing, I'm like, what are you talking about? And they were like. <laughs> and then we, op we opened the doors and gave it a, a couple of these. And then. Oh, my. Well, yeah, stuff like that. It's just it's, it just you can't. There's no rhyme or reason. Wow. Oh, but I, I did say we've all been there, okay? <laughs> I know I've been I've been that guy before in class and just been like, I don't know who did it. Oh. Wow. Wow. Yeah. So, so uh, for telling that story, I'm going to pray for you, Misan. Uh, you may need some divine intervention after telling that about your one of your coaches. Uh, wow. Well, kind of going from just a funny and light moment to, uh, to me, and, and – Guys, I've been watching ball basketball for a long time. I've never seen this happen as concentrated and as long. Uh, it was basically emotional abuse of, of not the in team, but you as a player. This was at the IU game in Evanston this year. You're returning to Northwestern and playing. And, gang, it just was unbelievable. And then so the next day I'm reading the press. You could, And, by the way, you could hear it on the TV pull it up on YouTube and you'll know what I'm talking about. Um, but the next day you tweeted out, and again, I was just stunned because I would have been more like Ron Artest, you know, at the Malice at the Palace. Uh, I, at your, I mean, you're 23 years old. You went through that and you tweeted out the next day, and you get kind of emotional talking about this, but you said, my t family loves me, my team loves me, God loves me. Love is greater than hate. And where did that kind of 
spirit come from? I mean, dude, I wouldn't have had it when I was your age. Um, just perspective. Uh, I, I, it was, it was a, a moment and not a mo just a moment, but a whole night that, you know, number one, I'll never forget. And number two, was something that I, like you said, I've never seen that, never seen anybody experience it. And um, I was just, I was just dumbfounded with why it happened. And I was asking myself, like, why? Like, I was like, man, I, th I thought I was, I, I gave that school and those people everything I could, you know, for three years. And, you know, to be tr treated like that and that, you know, yelled at me and chanted at me, it was, it was very difficult knowing that, you know, I have my family watching on the, on TV. You know, I have, you know, young kids at home watching on TV, you know, hearing that. And uh, it, it was difficult, but, you know, you know, like I told you, you know, before, is like uh, after that game, I didn't speak. Like I didn't – flew home, took the bus home. The next day of practice, I was just going through the motions. Like I, I – you know, it was hard. It was really, really, really hard. And, um, you know, I decided to tweet that out because it just – I was able to just to sit back and, and realize that again, it's it's uh it's all just a game. It's all perspective. I can't control what anyone else does. Um, I can't control what anyone else says, but I can, uh, you know, have empathy and feel for you know someone who feels the need to to do that. And uh, I'm not that type of person. That's not how I was raised. And uh, how I was raised is, you know, my dad would always kind of piss me off when he would, you know, someone would do me wrong and I'd be angry and he would just say, pray for him. And uh, it made me mad more than anything. I'm like, screw that, man. I want to pray for them. Like, eh. pray, to, pray for them to trip or something. Like, I don't know. <laughs> like, that's that's what I was thinking. Yeah, okay. Oh, yeah, I'll pray for him. But uh, it's that's kind of where I got that of, uh, you know, they don't know what they're doing, you know, they don't know the true impact of it. But I do know that, uh, like I said, my family loves me, my teammates love me, my God loves me. And that's, that's all that matters to me. It really is. And uh, it allowed me to go, you know, move forward and, you know, be stronger because of it. Yeah, I'm, again, I'm just in awe of you because I don't know if 61, I would have had that much uh, forgiveness in my heart. Um, I wanted to ask, you said or in an interview or, or tweeted or texted or whatever uh, that you have a daily meditation book for uh, athletes that you uh, read. And I wanted to ask, what is that book? And then kind of a follow-up, what do you do to keep yourself spiritually strong or in your walk with the Lord? Um, you know, so that's something that, again, I've worked on and still not where I want to be, but it's a process, I believe, and uh, – with all the travel, it's hard for me to, you know, get to church and, 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 you know, spend time in the church. But, you know, the way I kind of make time is uh, what I've found helps me is I speak, you know, I, I'm verbal with uh, my prayer, you know, every morning, every night, you know, the middle of the day. You know, I walk, wake up and I'm walking my dog. It's just me, you know, no phone. And, you know, I'm out just talking to the Lord. And, uh, like, you know, like, like we are right here. And so that's something that's always, that's, that's really helped me, um, you know, because I think it just truly builds, you know, your relationship. And, uh, you know, lately I've been wanting to, you know, make an effort to get more into, uh, you know, the scripture and, and the word. And uh, it's, it's a struggle. I, I've, I've learned it's, there are distractions and, and the devil puts things in your life that makes it, that pulls you away, I believe. And, uh, I've been just been trying to clear my plate um, in the mornings for, you know, for that stuff, for my devotional and, and, and uh, you know, all that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, I, I don't know. Obviously, whatever you're doing, it's working. <laughs> so, um, so yeah. Uh, um, talking about adversity, uh, I guess to shift a little bit, but I want to talk about we've got some Purdue folks here. Tony in the back played uh, rugby at Purdue. Uh, he's our bouncer, uh, uh, but what is it like to play at Mackey Arena? Well, it's definitely the loudest. 
Yeah, I get it. I will say that it's louder than Assembly Hall, but um, it's really cool. It's really cool. I've always, I've always loved playing there, uh, and it's uh, you walk in and you just feel like you're in a different world. Like everybody's like it's whether it's a blackout or a gray out or whatever. It's like you're in a different universe. You step into that, you know, into that gym. You look up and then. All right, let's do it. <laughs> and, uh, and the, the the first I remember the first time I was in there, and it's built like a bowl, and you know it's, everything's on top of you. Everything kind of you know comes in center and comes down. I think that's why it's so so darn loud. But um, they uh, you know you you go in the night before or the day before or the day of for a shoot around, and so it's just you and the team in there. And so my first time in there. Like, we're dribbling the balls, and guys are talking, whatever, and playing music. And there's, like, you know, I, I'm in the you know center court, and I'm, like, saying something or dribbling. And I hear, like, these, like, chirps or whatever. Like, it sounds like birds are in there. I'm like, guys, are there birds in here? Like, what's the deal? And my coach comes up to me and goes, no, it's just the echo. And I'm like, what? I'm like, yeah, it's just, like, voices, the ball bounces and stuff, and it echoes like it's that loud and it all is like you know pours on the court and i'm like there's no way and then we get to the game and i'm like yeah okay all right <laughs> that's true oh I, I i uh i i can i can hear it so not i'm ratting him out here but your dad texted me a photo that he took of of you and your coach and you're saying a prayer before you go into the iu purdue game at Mackey this year uh, what, what was that prayer? Because I'm going to use it. <laughs> uh, it's always, it's always, um, you know, about, like I said, playing for the uh, the audience of one, um, playing with confidence, knowing that my confidence is in him, not in myself, not in, you know, the work or the whatever it is. It's you know the. Co it, it's confidence in, in the Lord and in God because I, I truly believe God is in control. And um, that's that's really it, you know, playing for the audience of one, thanking, um, you know, the Lord for the opportunity uh, to be out there and to play and to, to, to perform after all the work, um, you know, that I've, I've done. So that's really what it is. And it's, it's something that I'm going to miss dearly with Coach Cliff. And, you know, I think he might as well. But. It, it brings a smile to my face because I know exactly what you're talking about. I do it. We do it every single game. And uh, it's just rejoicing in, in that moment, in that time. Wow. that, that That's, you know, uh, really cool. Now i got to ask you another question about Mackey. And it's not just at Mackey. This is at Assembly Hall. And every place you go, the visiting bench is always closest to the student section and the pep band. So I was at the game in Mackey. I, I'm talking to the guy next to me, and I'm just shouting to talk to him. I mean, it, how could you hear anything in the timeouts? I mean, how could you hear anything? Well, I, that's the good thing is I don't. <laughs> you just hit one of these. You're sweating, and it's really hot in there. It's really hot. And they're loud, and then the band's playing, and then you're just like this. You can't hear a thing. You drink some water, and you're like. <laughs> and then, you know, the, you hear the whistle, and they're like, okay, well, all right, let's do it. <laughs> so, it, uh, yeah, so that's kind of the best part about, you know, because, you know, coaches are always like, talk. You know, you got to talk. You got to be loud. They got to hear your voice. And I pride myself on that, you know, because that doesn't take, you know, athleticism. It doesn't take uh, skill. It's just it, it's something you have to do, and you have to uh, – commit to right and so that that's my that's my thing is on the court i'm always talking i'm yelling i'm telling guys where they're supposed to be you know guys you know think it's funny because i'm screaming and doing all this extra stuff but you know it is what it is but for that game it's the best because i don't have to do any of that because all our coaches are like it's gonna be so loud in there you're not gonna be able to hear yourself think and then you know you get you get in there and you don't even have to worry about talking because you just can just play wow wow Okay, so now I got to flip this because you're kind of unique in 
uh, and not alone, but unique in that you have played as a visiting team in Assembly Hall. So what is it like to play as a visitor and then as the home team in Assembly Hall? Well, I'll say this is it's kind of wild, but my first ever Big Ten game was at Assembly Hall. Yeah. And so I was a freshman at Northwestern, and this is basically you know, why I ended up coming here because I, that's where I fell in love with it. Was that was my first ever Big Ten game. Obviously, I love basketball. I love hoop. And, um, you know, it's my freshman year. It's also Romeo Langford's freshman year. So it's like there's a lot of hype. You know, everybody's excited. Like, you know, Indiana was probably, like, undefeated at the time. And, uh, you know, you go in there and feeling confident, a little nervous. And I start that game. You know, you hear the boos or whatever. And they didn't really they didn't care about me. I was just a young freshman getting in there and trying to not mess up. And um, but I remember early in the game, like they're you know Indiana's going on a run, and I like get the ball, turn, pass it, Romeo Langford steals it, and I turn and try to start running with him. No, no way. <laughs> and but you know in assembly, like when they know something's about to happen, it's like a build up, like ah. And so he goes up and dunks it, and I'm not – I'm really not even close, but I'm in the picture. Like, I got to I gotta at least act like I'm trying to run back, right? Or else I'm really going to get chewed out and filmed. And so he dunks it, and then, you know, obviously they're going to run. Crowd's going crazy, and then we call a timeout at Northwestern. We call a timeout. And then the crowd, like, goes to another level because they know it's like, oh, it's time now. And I kid you not, it was still the loudest, louder than any other gym, louder than Mackey. That was the loudest gym I've ever been in. And I, it was the weirdest thing because I remember walking back, like knowing that I'm going to get subbed out, knowing that I'm going to get yelled at, walking back to the huddle, like, again, I can't hear anything. And so I walked back to the huddle thinking two things. I'm like, dang, man, like, I knew I shouldn't have passed the ball. Like, no, I'm going to get subbed out. And the second thing I'm thinking in the back of my head is like, this is kind of cool. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> <laughs> like, just like all the fans and stuff. And then the best part about it was still so loud. My coach was like, and I was just like, all right, sure. <laughs> I'll go on the bench. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, that was my first moment in Indiana. And uh, I'll never forget it. And uh, it's a, a big part of the reason that I, I ended up here because of that moment of like, oh, this is kind of cool right here. <laughs> So there was a whiteout and redout game at, at Assembly Hall this year. The uh, whiteout game was for the North Carolina game, November 30. And then February 4, you play Purdue. And I have never heard that arena that loud. I mean, I can't, I can't hear anything. And I think I had some hearing damage from being there. But do you – I mean, there was so much energy there. Do you at times as a player – I mean, of course, you have to protect against energy when you're in a hostile environment. But when you're in that home environment and everybody's there, do you have to kind of step back a little bit emotionally to keep from getting too amped up? Yeah, for me, it's tough because, like, I, I play with my, you know, heart on my sleeve. Like, I'm, I'm energy, jumping around, physical, yelling, you know, just diving on the floor, doing whatever I can to help us win, right? But at the same time, you know, there's a finesse part of my game, which is shooting. Like, you have to be a dead eye, like, sniper. You have to have, you know, perfect. And for me, it's like OCD. You're perfect about everything you do in terms of your form, in terms of your workouts, in terms of your footwork. And so uh, there's a balance for me that I have to have because, you know, there are times when you'll get it and you'll feel so amped up. It's like the ball, like you don't even feel the ball in your hands. It's so light because you're just so ready to shoot it. And uh, it didn't. thankfully it didn't happen that game. But I remember like my only air ball of the season, I shot it over the rim. And I was like, oh, this is in, you know, because it feel, felt great. And I'm like, oh, yeah, boom, over the rim. And I go back to the huddle and Woody's like, relax. And I'm like, I'm relaxed, coach. Like, come on. And so, yes, you have to. You have to, yeah. especially as a shooter. So now I got to ask you about another difficult uh, this of uh, high high emotions. But Indiana played at Michigan State after this tragedy where three 
uh, Spartan students were killed on campus. So they played at Michigan, and then but Indiana was the first home game. I mean, I mean, obviously that was a difficult game for everybody involved. T tell us what that was like. Yeah, it was it was very emotional because, but you also you you had to. It was it was a weird game because you have to understand that you're there to win, but also there's something bigger at stake, you know. And so, for us, it was doing what we could to acknowledge what had happened and you know bring awareness to that situation, and uh, you know also you know be focused for the game. And uh, it was one of those games too where it's like you had a feeling that like things were gonna go their way just because of the night, because of what happened, and you know, everything that kind of led up to it. So it was definitely an emotional game. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's kind of shifting a bit again in your 100 things. You said uh, the basketball gods are real. Collins taught me that one. Say some more about that. Well, he was always, he. you know, college coaches all have sayings that they, they, they stick with, right? And so his, you know, talking about, like, you know, the work and, and the – the, the, the time you have to put in. You can't cheat the game. And so he was always talking about, you know, the basketball gods are real. You can't cheat the game. And in terms of how you, you know, prepare, you can't come into a game thinking you're going to make shots if all summer you didn't work on your shot. And so it's – we're odd, oddly enough, there are, there are guys like that who, you know, try to trick, trick the game, but you can't do that. And so that's something I'm always uh, – it gives me a little extra, you know, effort you know, knowing that it's like, all right, well, I got I to gotta do this because I can't expect it if I don't do it, you know? Yeah, yeah. So, okay, I, uh, I totally agree with you. The basketball gods are real. And also because you're a person of faith, I know you very much feel that God is real. How has God's presence in your life kind of shaped you, not only on what you do on the court, but just who you are as a person? Uh, I'd, I'd like to think it's still shaping me today. Um, I'm not perfect. I make mistakes. There are thoughts that I have that, you know, aren't great thoughts. I, I try to do the right thing. Uh, for me, it's a, a it, it gives me kind of a, a moral compass in terms of how I should act, how I ought to treat people, and uh, you know, understand that it's bigger. It's bigger than me. You know, this life is is temporary, and uh, you know, it's about having an impact with you know what you're blessed with and i'm blessed with an amazing opportunity to not just be at indiana but to go on from here and so um you know everybody i think is it's important for them to find how they can make their impact whether it's one you know uh, uh, on a s smaller scale or not i i believe everybody has a, a mission and a purpose and it's about finding it and for me i'm i'm, I'm still in that process but it uh you know, my faith allows me to um, act knowing that, um, you know, I've got God with me and no matter what I do. Yeah, yeah, very cool. Well, listen, we've talked about some fun things and some heavy things, but now we're really going to get serious, folks, because uh, I don't know if you're familiar with Zach Galifianakis' interviews between two ferns, but uh, I want to take us into that territory now uh, between uh, two lilies. So, um, so uh <laughs> Again, these are the tough questions, ladies and gentlemen. So uh, who uses more hair product, Trey Galloway or you? Trey Galloway, <laughs> a thousand percent. <laughs> but, yeah, no, not no, not me. Try, hey, I'm all natural, baby, okay? Uh -huh. Okay, so uh, continuing our focus on hair. So by the end of the season, you got me thinking about my hair. Yeah, 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 you're good. You're good. <laughs> I, I'm seeing maybe a couple of gray hairs though, Miller. So yeah, uh, it's all right. <laughs> Wisdom. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So by the end of the season, Anthony Leal was definitely sporting at 100% authentic 1980s mullet. So tragic mistake or smooth move? I loved it. <laughs> I loved it. Because every day in practice, we would, uh, like, we do the same drills every day in practice. We do, one of them is, like, three-man weave, right? And so you pass it, and then you're running behind somebody. And then and you pass it, and you run behind them. And so while we're running, you know, behind them, <laughs> every day I got to see it just, like, bump up and down. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, 
you know, it's it's I, I, every day. I maybe not every day, but like three, four times a week, I just give him just the confidence that I I think he he needed, and not needed, but maybe just you know like to hear, or just like a walking by, like dude, hair looks good today, man. <laughs> <laughs> just walking by, like hey, flow is good, bro. Yeah, I I think uh, in a in a just kind of battle between uh, David Spade, his hair mullet, and Joe Dirt, and Anthony Leal's mullet, Anthony Leal wins hands oh, down. Oh, easily because it's clean too. Like he, well, he yeah, there, <laughs> there he is keeps that, it yeah. clean. It's 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 yeah. big time. Yeah, yeah. So uh, we all know you have three brothers. Are they also named for classic American beers? No. <laughs> <laughs> Now, I, I, I do have to counter that because, uh, folks, they are named uh, Miller's in the middle. So the oldest is Bud, uh, and then you have Sam for Sam Adams, and then Coors kind of stretch in there. So <laughs> I, as a parent, I know you'll want to continue this tradition. Uh, and I've thought about if you have a girl, she's got to be named Stella. That's a good one, actually. Yeah, for Stella uh, Artis. That might, or, that might work, actually. Or Artois. That's French Miller, so I I looked it up. Ah, we. Oui. Uh, yeah. So um, <clears throat> now you played your high school ball at Houston Christian High School, which guys only has 740 students. So do they pretty much let anyone who wants to play on the basketball team? Oh, see. <laughs> nah. <laughs> I don't know how to answer that one. <laughs> Basically, they're tryouts, but you know I think everybody makes it. Uh, but yeah, <laughs> I did. I will say I did go my freshman year. I went to uh, Stratford High School, home of many of you might know Andrew Luck, uh, and so big time football school. So not 700. That's kind of why I had to go because it was straight. They were trying to get me to play tight end more than you know shooting guard. So yeah, yeah. Okay, so as I told you, we do have some Purdue fans here tonight. This is an ecumenical crowd. Uh, so this question is for our Boilermaker fans here. Uh, so while courtside, Coach Woodson, he, he, he's in the chairs, but he's on this massive black block, and he sits above everybody. So I know he's had back problems. Is that big black block, is that a cushion for his back, or is that a weight to keep him from throwing his chair? Def oh, man. <laughs> Definitely not the second. But no, he yeah, it's just a, just a little prop, easy easy access, I guess. It's what he needs. Okay, very good. Oh, and also, uh, this is for our Purdue fans also. So your dog, uh, uh, year old, is named Ivy. Why on earth did you name your dog for Purdue star Jaden Ivy? Well, spelled differently, by the way. <laughs> but no, I did. I I. I, I named her Ivy because I was listening to a podcast while I was going to drive to go pick her up about how to be a good dog owner. And uh, they were talking about names, uh, like what are good names. And they were like short, simple names. And then one of them said Ivy. And I was like, oh, I kind of like that. And so I took it, knowing that, you know, that would be a thing for the next six months. And it was. Uh, and they were like, oh, like Jaden Ivy? I'm like, no, not <laughs> like Jaden Ivey. Uh, so, yeah, no. Okay, okay, all right, very good. Now, you said Race has a dog. His golden doodle isn't named Zach, is it? Oh, no, okay, no. Okay, 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 all right, very good. So, um, so yeah, uh, so I, I got to – we've got to be honest here. You're a little bit of a diva. Who throws a bigger fit, you or Fran McCaffrey? Okay, I, I'd say if you catch me on the wrong day, I might win that battle. <laughs> but no, I, I'm, I'd probably say him. The track record shows it. Yeah, definitely. Oh, my gosh. All right, so now who would make a better Bond villain? Uh, you, Xavier Johnson, or Zach Eady? Xavier Johnson, easily. Yeah, yeah. So, guys, I, I'm also a movie addict, so there's three kinds of Bond villains. One is the force of nature. Uh, uh, Roger Moore had to face a guy who was really big. He had, like, silver teeth or something. So Zach Eady is definitely a force of nature. Then Bond also has to face these sort of guys like Al Pacino that chew up the scenery and, you know, ha, 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 ha. That's definitely Xavier. Yeah. But the third kind are these sort of very cerebral, 
you know, champagne villains who sort of sit back and, uh, you know, p pull the marionette strings. I think you would make an excellent Austin Powers, Dr. Evil. Shaved head, you know, uh, yeah, and with, with uh, you'd have to get a cat on your lap, so, yeah, well, Mr. Bond, uh, so. Well, I mean, maybe in a couple of years, we'll figure out yeah, how yeah. that works out. Yeah, so when Hollywood calls coming, or, you know, comes calling, you, you tell them. Uh, well, yeah, I'll have that. you pitch the idea. Yeah, uh, perfect, oh, that's great. So um, uh, last of our Between Two Ferns, Between Two Lilies questions. So now that your athletic career, as far as college, is uh, over, uh, how quickly are you going to let yourself go? <laughs> oh, man. Well, you know what? We got our jerseys, right? So when you graduate, you get all your jerseys. And I was like, I try it on for just to see how this, this puppy feels, see if it still fits the same. Maybe a little tighter, but, you know. Uh, we won't, we won't talk about that. Okay. My prediction is that you are be going to become, remember the, uh, uh, sitcom Cheers with Norm, whenever they sh showed up, Norm, hi Norm, they just start, you know, getting his beer, they know what it is. No. I think that's going to be you at Chick-fil-A in Bloomington. It's like, it's, oh, oh, it's Miller, get the ice cream machine ready. <laughs> yeah, get him a couple cones. <laughs> Oh, good stuff. You're a good sport. Thanks for letting me, me tease you a little bit. So uh, that, now back to kind of more serious things. We, you know, we want to be more serious. This is a church. After all, there should be no joy in here. Uh, so, but, but seriously. It's a crack house, guys. <laughs> there you go. That's it. <laughs> so uh, uh, tell us what's next for Miller Cop. Uh, well, you know, I'm, I want to continue my playing career, and I'm not sure what that looks like, whether it's NBA, G League, overseas, whatever it looks like. Um, I just think it's it's all dependent on you know the opportunities that I get and making sure I'm ready for the mo you know ready for you know anything that comes my way because you know there are crazy stories you hear about sports and uh, you know I want to make sure that I, I leave this game and this time of my you know career and life with no regrets. So that's my that's my one goal. So if you do play pro, I think you got to keep now Miller in the the, the uh, tournament NCAA tournament. He sported this white headband uh, with the Adidas logo upside down. And in a post game interview, again, folks, you got to go check these out. They're, they're whenever Miller's there, they're hilarious. But uh, you know, he said someone asked him about that. Did you, you know, cut or injury? And he's like, No, no, this is a it, it's a my fashion statement. I'm after all the one who has the most fa fashion style on the team. And then Woody, who doesn't say anything really in these interviews, he speaks up and he goes, really? <laughs> <laughs> so I think you got to have the headband and you got to get an afro like Will Ferrell and the Flint Tropics. Wow, I, I, I got to figure out how to get a perm or something. <laughs> that might be tough. Yeah. So uh, while we're talking about uh, 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 Will Ferrell and uh, what's your s uh, favorite sports movie? And it is, if it's not Hoosiers, please explain yourself. I mean, I'm going to say Hoosiers, of course. But if I had to choose another one, let's just do that. If I had to choose another one, sports movie, I'm going to go basketball. No, you know what? I'm going to go Moneyball. It's baseball. Oh, I love that movie. I yeah. watch it. If it's on TV, I'm watching it every time. I've probably seen it 12 times. But yeah, yeah. I'll watch it again. I'll watch 13 tonight. Yeah, so watch this. I love my favorite line from it is, is uh, 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 Brad Pitt is the general manager for the Oakland A's, and he's going to the owner, and he's going, there are good teams. There are bad teams. Then there's 50 feet of crap, and then there's us. So it's, it's uh, but of course, that's when they turned it around and, you know, had that incredible run. It's a great movie. Yeah, so, okay, go, all right. You passed our movie test, uh, of course. Um, so uh, I have to say, you're clearly, uh, you have a gift of, uh, a verbal gift, and also, again, your interviews and the stuff that you've interviewed uh, on your YouTube channel, you've interviewed teammates, hilarious. I think you would be an excellent uh, sports commentator or, a, a, I don't know, or a play-by-play -play announcer, or I think you'd be a great coach, too. Uh, uh, do any of those possibilities interest you? I'm, I'm interested in a lot of things. Um, but we'll see, we'll see what happens. I mean, I've got, I've already have kind of a couple, uh, offers to do that stuff. So, I'm, but 
they're they're kind of ongoing offers kind of while I play and stuff. But when I'm done, I know I can do that stuff. So it's cool. It's cool and it's definitely a blessing. But right now, it's about you know playing professionally and you know doing that. But uh, it 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 is interesting to see kind of how that would how that would look. You know. Yeah. 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 So one of these you got to look up is post game interview. It's uh, Miller and uh, TJD. And TJD is a pretty stoic kind of player, but you cracked him up. Someone asked you dove on the ball on the floor for a ball that game, and somebody asked you, "No, where's this scrappiness come from?" And I think I've watched this so many times I can quote it. Well, I grew up with three brothers, and we pretty much fought all the time. Uh, we would, you know, play two on two basketball, and we had the cops called on us a couple of times, you know. And TJD's like cracking up, and 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 then you kind of go on and say. Uh, so, uh, yeah, and then um, uh, one Christmas, my dad bought us boxing gloves. That didn't last long. <laughs> Not long at all. <laughs> he thought it would be a good idea. And, boy, so we, uh, you'll have to go on uh, now that you've got some time. So YouTube, uh, the Graham Norton show, he's interviewing the guy who played uh, Superman, Henry Cavill. And the guy, he says, Henry, I understand that you've had some brothers, and that was rather interesting growing up. And he said, yes, we got into it all the time. My mother finally got the walls painted with a kind of paint that could be easily scrubbed because she would have to get the blood off the wall. And I kind of thought, yeah, he's kind of hyping this up. But after hearing you say that, I'm thinking maybe not so much. <laughs> yeah, no, we would uh, – we would. oh, man. Yes, there were a lot of times the police By the way, see, us. even just mentioning you and your brothers, you know, exactly. the cops they are don't already know, wired yeah. to come in. Yeah. I got to get an escape route or something. <laughs> no. But we would, all my brothers and I, when we were kind of around, we're all two years apart. So, like, when we were all around a similar age, um, we would, upstairs, there was this, like, you know, little carpeted uh, room. And it was pretty much open. And... You know, we there were like two windows up, you know, at the top of, of the uh, the room, and we would get all like the pillows and like blankets and like towels, and we would like black them out, and so we'd play at like 9:30 or 10:30 p.m., and it was pitch black, like you couldn't see anything, and so we called the game blackout. Okay, so there's three brothers, including me, so there's four of us. We all start in one corner. It's pitch black, I tell you, all right? Mom and dad are downstairs doing who knows what. And the only rule was you can't cry. Because <laughs> if, if, if you cry, mom's coming up, dad's coming up, and the game's over. <laughs> so that was the only rule is, like, do it. And then, you know, the youngest would always start going, like, dude, like, come on, bro, like, stop, stop, stop. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, so that was that was one of the one of the games we had, and then we grew out of it, and whatever. Thank goodness we did. But <laughs> yeah, that was that was uh, a really big one for us for a couple years there. Yeah, I've met two of your brothers, and these are big guys. So uh, yeah, uh, I I imagine that there were some uh, some interesting times for your for, for your folks. Uh, so I got to ask. Obviously, the the championship game is tomorrow night. Who do you have picked to win? UConn. UConn's good, man. They are, oh man. But again, like like us, we had like our our team. We had what three three losses in a row, and it seemed like the world was over. They lost like six in a row earlier this year. Look at them now. So for next year, who knows what happens? But hey, if you lose six in a row, we're winning the national championship. <laughs> yeah. But no, I think I think UConn. So my people are very good to me here, and I'm, I told you I'm an addict. So I was in Albany. And so, uh, by the way, since they've started selling beer, the line for the men's room a lot longer. But I'm standing there, and I feel like I'm in the cat or in the movie Goodfellas with all the extras, because it's like, you know, and all these people. A lot of UConn folks came up. Tony, you're going to get on me because he's from Connecticut. Uh, but uh, it's like, uh, hey, Vinny, who who do you like? Uh, who do you think's going to do? It? I said, hey, it's UConn all the way, man. It's it's a lock. Yeah, yeah. I told my bookie, you know. Yeah, I got the over under cut. I mean, it was yeah, it was really interesting and very yeah. colorful. Um, so, uh, okay, one more question, then we're going to let you go. Uh, you've been very generous with your time, and again, we thank you for coming all this way. It's 150 miles round trip from Bloomington. Some of you guys here know that. Uh, uh, but 
Um, is there anything else? I, you know, you're talking to a preacher, so it's hard to get a word in edgewise. So, but is there anything else you want to say to us about basketball or your faith or or life or anything um, else? Uh, it's weird because I'm um I'm, I'm in a position, you know, at times to with a mic, you know, to speak and have a platform. And um, I just want to say thank you, you know, for coming out. I, I this is a a blast for me. I'm glad that I could do this and just have anybody here um and thank you for uh mailing me and uh i got them all i read them all and i still have them all and uh it, it truly means the world because i it it reminds me that there are people watching you know the people that care um and you know anything i have to say is oh man i don't i don't know i, I, I all i gotta say is um Believe that, you know, what you're doing is right and trust it and trust God and trust the fact that you are on the right path and there will be tests, um, but make those tests your testimony and um, allow that to shape who you are for the better. That's that's all I got. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's that's more than enough. And I, and I have to say. We're, we're all here because we love you. We love you as a brother in Christ. But I want to tell you, as a pastor, I've gone to people dying from cancer, you know, going, oh, my gosh, how, Lord, please just help me. You know, I don't know what I'm going to say to them. And I, and I go in the, the, the hospice, their room in hospice care or go into the hospital and, and say, hey, how are you doing? John, did you see the IU game last night? <laughs> And all they want to talk about is basketball. So I, I know you know this, but I, I'm going to say it to you anyway. We love you for who you are. We love the team, and uh, you mean the world to us. And uh, I don't. Uh, we're, we're not going to get through an Indiana winter without you. You know, I mean, it's uh, so. I just really thank you. Now I, I asked Miller about this, and I don't mean to spring anything on you, but before uh, we conclude and you leave. Would it be okay if I said a prayer for you? Please. Okay. Uh, would it be okay if I put my hand on your shoulder? Please. Gracious God, Lord, we thank you for your servant, your child, beloved child, your son, Miller. Lord, I would pray that you would continue to pour out your blessings upon him. He's kind of banged up from the season. We pray that you'll help him to, fe he to heal physically. And, Lord, we pray every good thing for this young man, for his life and uh, his future. He's got a lot of good possibilities. As he explored the, these, oh, Lord, we pray that as he knocks, that you'll open the right door for him. And that as he walks with you, that you will bless him and guide him and uh, be with him each day uh, that, so that he is with you in this life and in the life to come. Bless his teammates. We're thankful for his family. Lord, uh, most of all, we just thank you for Miller. Bless him. We ask these things trusting in your mercy, your grace, your power and love. In Jesus' name we pray. And all God's people said, amen. So Miller was just worked this in, and uh, he's got to get on the road because uh, this dog, uh, Ivy, is in double overtime with her bladder. Um, so she's working hard right now for me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, Pat, can you maybe uh, help escort uh, Miller out? Can we do a we can can we do like a big group picture? That will be so cool. Can we do that. Yeah. Uh, so, folks, why don't you all come up here? And, and we'll get Miller, one. you're going to have to be in the front because otherwise nobody will <laughs> see you. Um, but, yeah, come on up and we'll do a group picture. That's great. Oh, my gosh. M Miller, I'm going to be able to say we had an altar call and everyone came forward. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> That's so cool. And by the way, I found out. <laughs> yeah, no, you're perfect right there. Yeah. 
Also, I found out, Miller, that when I tell people uh, to come to church because it's Miller time, people really respond. So, yeah, come on up, and uh, I, David's going to take the picture, and I tell you what, I'll uh, text it to you, and then you can post it on your Twitter feed. Um, so, so, yeah, oh my gosh, this is great. Oh, oh yeah, absolutely. That's, yeah. Did anybody, any Purdue fans uh, dare to wear a, a Boilermaker shirt? <laughs> oh, man, okay. <laughs> Oh, man, so cool. All right, everybody looks sweet, wholesome, and virtuous. Oh, wonderful, wonderful. Well, let's give Ed Miller a round of applause, everybody. So, and I got to say, I hope you go to church this next Sunday, but if you don't have a church home, come be with us on Easter. We're having breakfast at 10, worship at 1040. We're giving away free trees on Saturday from 9 to noon, so come and get one of those. You could take one of those as a special gift for Ivy. <laughs> so come back next Saturday. <laughs> it's such a pleasure.